Hello friends, this is Joel Humphreys. I'm glad to be with you. And may the Lord bless you today. I hope this will be a good day for you. A good week, yeah, a good year, if God so allows you to live. I have a word for you from the Word of God. I have a message today in ten minutes. I'm going to bring a message both to those who are Christians and those who are not Christians. A message to the saved and to those that are not saved. A message to the saint and a message to the sinner. I want you to hear it because it's a message that will touch your heart wherever you are, whatever condition you're in, you're bound to fall into a line of either being a Christian or a non-Christian. We're either going to heaven or we're going to hell. There are only two kinds of people in the world as far as religion is concerned, according to the Bible, and that's the ones that are saved by the grace of God through Jesus Christ and those who are lost and going to hell without Christ. And so I want you to know the importance of believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Number one is, I want a word here to, uh, to a message to the uh, people that are, are saved, or to you that are Christians, to you that love the Lord, to you that, that uh, belong to God. I, I, I want to read to you a word from the Lord, and that is that uh, the, we, we need to recognize that God can do anything. I want you to know that God is a God of miracles, Christian. And I want you to depend on Him and lean on Him and trust Him to help you when nobody else can help you. And when there's no other way but His way, then you'll find that His way is right. And so we need to, to believe in Him and to know that it's right. In 19th chapter of the book of Matthew, Jesus said unto them, With men things are impossible, but with God all things are possible. With men, things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And I want you to uh, read you uh, in, in regard to, to this. I, I, uh, I want to read in the Matthew, uh, the, uh, of the Matthew 19th chapter where, where Jesus is teaching, and where, where it reveals the time when Christ uh, fed the, a multitude of people with five loaves of bread. He was on uh, at the Mount, probably the Mount of Olives, and people had gathered uh, to hear him speak, and he was speaking and preaching, and they were listening and listening, and he kept talking, and finally, finally one of his disciples said, Lord, it's getting late, and these people need to go home because they've got a long way to walk, and, and it's getting late. They need to get home and get something to eat. And Jesus said, why don't you feed them? And and the disciple says, What? Well, we, we just have a little bit. We don't have all anything to feed. Even ourselves, much less 5,000 men besides women and children. Probably close to 10,000 people out there. And, and then and then one came and, and said, Here's a little lad here that's got a, his lunch. He's got five loaves and two fishes. But he said, What are they? among so many. And Jesus said, tell the people to sit down and tell them we're going to feed them. And, he, and they told him. They couldn't believe it, but they said, all right, everybody sit down, we're going to feed you. And they all sat down on the grass. And Jesus took the loaves and he broke it and he said, bring your basket. And they had, each one of the disciples, no doubt, had a basket. So there was 12 baskets. And he broke it and put a piece in each basket. He took the fish and broke it and put a piece in each basket. He said, now feed them. And they began to pass out those baskets. And they began to pass out. And as the people took bread out of that basket, their bread would multiply. As they took a piece of fish, that fish would multiply. And the more they took out, the more it multiplied. Until finally, the Bible said that 5,000 men beside women and children had eaten, and they were all they wanted of bread and fish. And they had twelve basketfuls left over. Had a basketful left over for each one of the disciples. Out of a lad's lunch of five loaves of bread and two fish. Well, you say, I don't believe it. Then you don't believe the Word of God. The Word of God. What are you going to believe if you don't take the Word? You're going to believe the mystic opinions of men that, that live a day and are gone forever. And shall stand before the judgment of God. Oh, believe this Bible. Believe God can do the impossible. Now, Christian, notice that little lad gave what he had. 
You don't have a whole lot to give the Lord, but give what you got. You say, I can't preach like some people. That's all right. You can pray, and you can say a word. You can say a word or two. Do what you can. You say, I can't give much money. That's all right. Give what you got. If you can't give a hundred dollars, give a dollar. But give what you got. The little lad gave everything he had. But notice, he gave it all to him. Uh, Jesus wants your heart, but He wants all of it. He wants all of your heart. Don't hang back and say, I want to continue to do this. I want to continue to do that. Lord, I'm giving you my life, all of it. I come to you to give all of it. And then I'm seeking you with all my heart. And He said, if you seek me with all your heart, you're going to find me. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to change your life. I'm going to write your name in my book. And you'll be mine forever. <clears throat> because I am your God. And you are my disciple and my child. And so it's important, Christian, to know nothing's too hard for God. God is able to do it. God is willing to do it. And He'll do it. Oh, praise God. There's a scripture in Ephesians, in the thir uh, third chapter of Ephesians. Now to Him, our Lord, who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or even think, according to the power that works in us, to Him be glory through Jesus Christ our Lord forever. Now that He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or even think, Christian. According to the power that works in us, He's going to work in you and do these things when you believe, when you believe. But you need to turn everything over to Him. You need to give Him all of your lunch. You need to give Him all of it. The little boy didn't say, I'm going to keep a piece of this bread for me. You can have the rest. No, he said, there it is, all five of them. I want you to know, dear friends, that the Bible says in Proverbs, the third chapter, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge God in all your ways that He will direct your path. And now, and now, my friends, trust Him. Trust Him, dear friend, and He'll bless you with miracles. All things are possible with God. He's blessed me in so many ways. I could never, ever thank Him enough. He's healed me. He's healed me of diseases that the doctor said couldn't be healed. He has blessed me with blessings that man has never been able to bless me with. He has done for me some things that are so great and wonderful, and He'll do it for you. And He's done it for you. And He's doing it for you. Open your eyes and see the blessing of God in your life. And now I turn to the person that's not a Christian, a message to you. And this message is found in the book of Numbers, in the 21st chapter of, of the book of, of Numbers in the Old Testament. It tells that God was disappointed with the people of Israel, and He sent among them a plague to punish them because of their sins and of their idolatry. And the uh, punishment was, uh, was uh, snakes, poisonous snakes, that just covered all of Israel. And they were biting people, and people were getting sick, and they were dying. And God spoke to Moses and said, Moses, there is a remedy, one remedy, that will save the people of Israel from all these poisonous reptiles. He said, the remedy is you take a pole and you build a brass serpent out of the fire, form a brass serpent, put it on this pole and set it up in the camp of Israel and tell the people, send word up and down the camp in the lives of people. Come and look at that pole and look at that brass serpent and whosoever believes that this is God's remedy will be healed. This is God's remedy. If you look and believe in me that I'll heal you, you'll be healed. And that was done. Here the servant was put on the pole, and the word was sent up and down the line, and the people came by the hundreds and the thousands, and they looked. Some of them didn't, and they were dying, and they died from the serpent. But many of them looked and believed, and they were healed. Now here's what Jesus said in the book of John. And the third chapter of the book of John is it's an interesting word because we have it from, from God's own word. And Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. Believe in Jesus. He was lifted up upon a cross. 
for you. Now, whosoever believes in him that this is God's remedy for your sin, he shall be healed, he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit, he shall be blessed, he shall be forgiven, he shall be changed, he shall be born again, and he shall live forever because God is doing it. God has done it. God will do it now when you believe in him.